It's your old friend, Yosemite Sam. You know, when I'm not doing commercials and I'm not shopping, I watch movies. Remember I told you last time that one of popcorn from the movie theater? Well, I watch a lot of movies. But recently I haven't made it to the theater, so I'm watching a lot of DVDs and Blu-rays. Used to watch VHS, but that went away from like, I don't know, back when the dinosaurs did. So anyway, we're going to go through some movies that that I like in a segment we call Yosemite Sam's Movie Reviews. Now, just to let you know, some of these films came from my fine friends at the Criterion Collection. They are the best. You should check them out. That's Criterion.com. So we're going to start with Barfly. Barfly, based on a writing by Charles Bukowski, you know, the poet, the the old man, the dirty old man, all that, yeah. Really, really interesting stuff. Now, now, it's a good movie. It's a little dark, but I want to point out something very, very important. You shouldn't try to drink like Charles Bukowski. That's a bad idea. Charles Bukowski, good writer, don't drink like him. Anyway, next up, Roadhouse. That's right, Roadhouse. It's got Patrick Swayze as a bouncer that's got a philosophy major. And he's beating up on people and he's trying to save the the city. And it's got everything. It's got a love story. It's got Jeff Heatley and some blues. The disc I have even has a commentary track by Kevin Smith. You know, the guy that did Clerks. Check that one out. Got another one here for you. It's called Until the End of the World. Now, back in the 90s, there was a film that came out called Until the End of the World. And for the United States, it was about two and a half hours long. And it's a story of a woman that's traveling around the world, and there's opals, and there's money, and all sorts of stuff. You know, there's, there's science, there's dreamscapes, lots of stuff, right? Great movie, then. Two and a half hours, still a great movie, but at four hours long, I don't know why I want to say it's better. I mean, it is better, but it's an investment, but it's worth the investment. You should check it out. Got another one here, again, from the Criterion Collection, a film by, I'm going to screw up this name, Asami Sabini from, no, uh, oh, where is he from? He's from Africa, obviously, but you don't just want to say Senegal. It is from Senegal. It's called Black Girl. Now, it's not a very long film. It's only about, I don't know, but look an hour long. But it's a really good film. It's about colonialism and maids. And just check it out. Just just go. If you, you might be able to see it on the Criterion channel, if you have the Criterion channel. Again, you can find that at Criterion.com, so check that out. And one more for this segment. I've got Beauty and the Beast. Now, you're thinking, ooh, I love Disney. No, I I like Disney too. It's an okay version. But this is by the French surrealist Jean Cocteau. It's amazing. It's, it's, think about all the best parts of, of the animated film, but think better, think a little weirder, think black and white, think candlesticks that move by themselves, not animation. And the cool thing about this disc is it, it also is an opera by Philip Glass. You know, the guy that goes one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. That guy. So, check that out. We'll be right back. This is your community calendar. Do you have hopes of becoming a working actor? The Robert Maplethorpe School of Performing Arts is holding an improvisation workshop and performance this Sunday. It's free to be a participant and $16 to watch. For more info, call 867-5309. Meet your favorite YouTube stars as well as such excellent luminaries like Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey on Social Media Day. This is a 100% virtual event. For more info, go to socialmediaday.event. We have a surprise from you straight from a DeLorean. Charles Dickens will be reading from some of his best-known works. 
Bring your copies of Great Expectations and a Christmas Carol to get signed this Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the Bookend Bookstore. Bring the kids for the 6th Annual Ice Cream and Dirty Books Parade and Celebration is this Saturday morning starting at 11 a.m. at the Ice Cream Ice Cream Truck at Kirk Cameron Park. Guy Freddy has the Triple D, but we've got the Triple T. Trucks, Tacos, and Tejano. There'll be food trucks, music, local vendors, and more. It's Saturday and Sunday at the Freddy Fender Civic Center on Salina Boulevard. Back to your Yosemite Sam's movie reviews in just a moment. My folks are sluggish. Coffee doesn't do anything for her. The doctor gave her some pills that are poisoning her. But I found something that would give her everything and is 101% safe. Go Go Power by Roadhouse gives you that give up and go without all that got up and went. Developed by a group of scientists, doctors, and nutritionists in Eastern Europe over 12 years ago, Go Go Power is guaranteed by the Roadhouse seal of approval. Available at your local Piggly Wiggly and wherever mids are sold. <laughs> We're back! Got some more movies here! Because you know what this is. This is Yosemite Sam's Movie Reviews. Let's keep going. So the next one we got is Brewster's Millions. Did you know there's like a billion versions of this? It started off as a book, and then there's like two or three different American versions. There's an, there's an Indian version. I think there's an Indian version. Anyway, there's a bunch of different versions. And this one is with Richard Pryor and John Candy and Jerry Orbach. Basically, the premise is... Brewster, Montgomery Brewster, is going to inherit a lot of money. But first, he's got to inherit, a, he gets a small amount to spend. So, he gets $30 million to spend in 30 days. And if he does that, he can get $300 million, but he cannot have any assets. So, he's doing things like buying rare stamps and mailing them. Isn't that wonderful? Anyway, lots of fun. Throw in some, some microwave popcorn up for that mook mook. Multi mook, sorry, multi mook. And check it out. Oh, pound, town popo. Ooh. Okay. So if there are any kids listening to this, you might want to send them out of the room. Because, are they gone? Okay, they're gone. So Tam Popo, on one hand, is a story about starting a ramen business in Japan. A little ramen shop. That's a part of it. But part of it's also about the eroticism of food. And I'm just going to say, I watched this with the missus and we had certain feelings. We had certain thoughts about it. None of them were negative. So, don't want to watch that. Just watch that one with the kiddos. But a really good movie. Check it out. Next up is a film that was once called a documentary from 2005. It's called Idiocracy. Idiocracy is about a guy who is frozen and woke up 500 years later. And the whole country is considerably dumber. Like, considerably dumber. I'm not going to name any names, but y you know. You know what I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about, in fact. Uh -huh. Anyway, so he goes to the, the future where where it's considerably dumber, and he has to try to navigate through it. Kind of fun. I haven't watched that one in, I don't know, a few weeks. You should, I should check that out again. So, Desert Hearts. Desert Hearts was the sleeper from 1985. And basically, it's a story of a woman 
who wants to divorce her husband, but she has to go to Nevada for a certain period of time to do so. So she goes to a dude ranch, and then she falls in love with another woman. Now, I know, and you're thinking, oh, it's just one of those, you know, lesbians in love, exploitative. It is not exploitative. It is, if it were, it would be on Lifetime, if Lifetime were different. But very beautiful, wonderful film. Check it out. <sighs> Smoke signals. Smoke signals. Oh. How to describe smoke signals. I mean, on one hand, it's a road movie. It's about a journey to pick up something. I think it's ashes. But, you know, with road movies, they're never about the journey. It's always about, you know, rather, it's, always, it's never about the destination. It's always about the journey. It's always about what's happening and the, the things we learn along the way and all that. Uh, this one's written by novelist Sherman Alexie and, the writing is solid. You should check it out. Oh, we leave this one for last. Oh, uh, 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 Naked Lunch. Naked Lunch by David Cronenberg. He's a Canadian. He's one of those Canucks up there. How to describe Naked Lunch. I mean, I know with words. That's how we do things. But, so, it's based on this book by William S. Burroughs. And everyone calls that a novel, but it's not really a novel. I mean, it's a bunch of vignettes. It's more like a short story collection. But that book would be, like, really too difficult to write, to make into a novel, or to make into a movie. So they did, because they took parts of the, no the book, I'm about to call it a novel, it's not a novel, took parts of it and expanded or contracted so you get different parts of it. And they made a story about an exterminator named William Lee who shot his wife and then had to go away to something that looks like Tangiers. And then it gets messy. I mean, there are, there are bugs, there are typewriters, there's all sorts of weird substances. I mean, just weird substances. So, got to be in a certain mood for that. But I think it's worth it. I think you should check it out. In fact, I don't think there's any film in here that you shouldn't check out. Anyway, that's all my time for today. So, watch some movies. See you next time.